Invasion. How many times has this happened against you with a kindred stealing your blue? You're doing your clear, you hop a wall, and all of a sudden there's a kindred killing you for first blood. In this video, we're going to look at all the X's and O's about how you can avoid those particular scenarios, and then showing you how you can recover from this particularly sad start with your pathing and decision making to end up being the 828 hugely fed jungler that's going to carry the game. Don't forget Zara GG guides, link below, live companion, how to jungle in real time, catered for your particular champion. We have 10 champions done, four more coming this week, 16 coming more next week. Click that link in the description below. Coaching is available on Patreon with VODs and signups to get all the knowledge you need. And now without hesitation, let's begin. All right, as you can see, we're trying a bit of a different delivery system. I figured if everyone else is putting their faces on thumbnails, I might as well do the same, but I have to show my face in the video because if you don't watch my gameplay channel, you won't know it's me. So this was a question that was posed in the Discord. How do I deal with invading junglers? Uh, low elo versus high elo. Now the thing is about low elo invading junglers is they're not exactly going to do the invades properly. Uh, hate to break it to you, they might cheese you a whole bunch, they might end up in the right situation at the right time, but they're not sort of these savant level invading junglers. So what we're going to look at here is how we can sort of handle this uh, in, a, in a conceptual basis, and then we're going to show you some examples about how to avoid this in low elo as well. Obviously for this we need high elo. Y you know, Kindred is the number one invading jungler. How do you avoid things like a Kindred above Beth, uh, you know, a Rengar invade Nidalees as well? You have here the Kindred putting a deep ward early to see where you start. And immediately, this is just, you know, the personality trait at this stage. Obviously, they're going to move up to the blue and the grump and try and snack that away. Scanning, maximize the 10 second scan timer. You know, you have to do this if you are the invader. If you are the invadee, this has to be something that you're thinking about. Now, in terms of Talia, right, you can definitely red Raptors, grump and gank bottom lane. That is definitely a strategy that we can do. And that's a strategy we like to do. However, typically, they will look to do your red side into potentially a gank on the top lane, potentially a gank on the mid lane. Now, you could full clear or five camp minus the Krugs, but the king is basically banking on you doing a stereotypical clear. Now, the Talia should basically go, hmm, I'm against the Kindred, should have slapped the ward down early. I mean, at one minute, you put the ward down, happy days, cool, right? I don't care if you want the scanner first rotation. You can still do that one minute base, get your scanner, go back here, and now we, we, at least we would see this. If you see this, you can sort of react and, you know, hot flick yourself into a grump here and a blue here. Nice little full camber, gank the top lane. Get your uh, Sichuani Cushion ready to go. Nice uh, steamroll and, you know, destroy the lizard. We have here the Yone versus Zia, which means Zia will have prior early. So when we are against this, step one is obviously warding against junglers that might want to invade us. It helps us defend against the randomness. You can be a meta jungler and there'll be another jungler that's just better than you on invades. And so in that particular environment, level two, three, in a 1v1, you are actually worse off. This is a little bit of coin flip, you know, the Kindred's out here doing this. Uh, doesn't block the blue, you know, kind of avoids the the, the spells of, of the Talia, but in turn allows her to actually get the blue. So the Talia now does have that advantage. Now we see this re residual vision, okay? So this is where the invades become quite oppressive because the first step is to obviously go where they are not. So the Kindred's going to go ahead and do the wolves. And I just said, you know, you can't, you don't want to go where they, where they are. And in low what happens is 99% of the time, what you'll do is you just walk on down to where the Kindred is and then die again. You know, you have itemization here. We have a dark seal. That means we do win the 1v1, but typically you could just lose your camps. They're gone. The laners rotate and it's pretty sad. In this situation, it can be better just to say, well, look, maybe I can steal this, right? Maybe I can do other things while the Kindred is going to be forced into a rough situation. However, because the Kindred was low, we might not have expected them to kind of hang around in the area. We'll still get a Grump here. We get level three regardless. You know, if the Kindred takes the blue, then obviously the Kindred taking the Grump can really hurt us. But what's the big thing here? So the Kindred does the basic, I'm a walk into your jungle and steal your stuff routine. The Talia kind of is just going to do this concept of, hey, Red Raptors Grump gank the bottom lane. The Kindred kind of thought that Talia was going to do this loop clear, right? Which, of course, she didn't. Now everyone dies and Kindred basically steals this. Most likely can get one camp and get out. Chooses to take this one. Okay, that should be yellow. Chooses to take this one and they kind of run away. Now, as a Talia, right? We could say, right, I know Kindred's there. Therefore, I'm going topside. But what's Kindred going to want to do after this invade here? They're most likely going to want to protect this side of the map, this quadrant, okay? Because while this is available and this is available, the Kindred is more concerned at this stage about losing blue grub, wolves even, losing the whole quadrant if they invest too much more time on this side. Now, if they have support prior, obviously that roaming uh, tempo works as well. So what the Talia is going to do is move on down here, basically say, look, let me take whatever the Kindred left in this particular session, that's fine. Again, because we have the atomization spike, 
and we did actually get the blue. We could, in theory, look to fight the enemy jungler. We did have to pay attention to wave states, laner invades, and, and so on. But by basically saying, hey, look, Kindred's going to be on the other side to protect this blue side quadrant, this gives me a bit of free real estate into this zone here, okay? This is exactly what we want. And as soon as we show bot lane here creating this issue, what's going to happen to the Kindred? It's going to say, well, you know, if your drugs are available, you know, I can do that. I can also gank top lane because you're not there. And, you know, if you spend too much time down here, I'll take your tier two Raptors. Just by basically acknowledging that, hey, look, I might lose some stuff on the blue side and then moving down into this part of the river here, the invade has not ruined our game. Fortunately, we got the blue, but it doesn't really matter, right? We, we died. If you don't get the blue, it is, of course, worse. But, you know, as long as your Grom's there, you will get level three. So it doesn't really matter. Even if you didn't get the blue, red, Raptors, Grom is level three. And that's exactly what you want as the Talia. And basically by saying, look, I giveth you the top side now because that's most likely where you're going to want to go. I'm going to go where you are not to the bottom side here, impact the lane, try and impact the lane, try and get some counter jungling going. And what's going to happen is the Kindred then will be on the other side. And now we've basically swapped it and removed some of that invade pressure. So the Talia is going to go for this gank here. We chuck out our W, we force a flash on the Yin. That's absolutely perfect. We can kind of presuppose that the Kindred should be topside. However, we do not have concrete knowledge that that is the case, which means it's better to fall back to safety here onto our bottom scuttle. The Karma now level two roaming after the pry on the bottom lane. Yeah, exactly. Right. You want to leave? So Raka rotates. We're going to knock that up. We're going to secure this. Kindred is going to get the benefit of this here and know that the um, Talia is on the bottom side, right? So we can kind of fall back to our Gromp here. And now we have a bit of cryo and breathing space because we went where the Kindred was not. Now, if we basically see our alternative strategy of going to the top side here, we could very easily be collapsed on Y because Renekton has prior, because Azir has prior. And that's where the downside of this particular strategy is. And that's why going where they are not doesn't always hold true unless you assess the lane stage, you see? So ideally, yes, we go where they are not, but it doesn't necessarily mean in phase one. Phase one would be, hey, they're here, therefore I should go topside. Uh, yeah, but what's what's the, what's step two in that? What's step three? For us, step two is at least, well, we'll get one thing, and if they overstay, I'll kill them. And then of course I can gank the bottom lane, I can take a crab, get some breathing space, okay? So that's how we see that through. Now, of course, there's not much else to do here. We could go and take the Raptors. We use a little bit of the vision tricks that I talked about um, in the video last week, which no one watched. Please go watch it. Excellent uh, tips about vision to remain hidden and things like that. Very important when you're dealing with invades. The biggest issue with dealing with invades is that you get seen in this particular scenario. And that's the kind of stuff we want to avoid. Now, Azir steps up in this situation to try and stop the Yone's back which is what causes us to be seen in the first place. But here we go. Kindred is now over here, all right? Moving to the top side, I think we can kind of understand, like, look, Kindred hasn't shown up bottom side. Kindred most likely doing that blue side, stealing the, the, the Skull Crab and so on. And here we can see the animation. Yes, in fact, they are on our Krugs because that's exactly what they want to do. Now, the Kindred's assuming a little bit too, you know, too much, I think, that the Tele is going to be going for the Raptors here, kind of really greedy stealing these Krugs. But of course, at this particular point, the Yone wasn't based, right? So the Kindred's going to go for this flash. We have here the complete rotation by the Renekton, the complete rotation by the Azir. And this invade is exactly what people are talking about. Like, oh, good grief. You know, Rakayo, I got invaded level two. Then I did a good play, but then I got invaded by the whole team. 3v2, because my mid lane was based. Well, I mean, the mid lane is based. So that's actually good timing by the Azir and good roaming by the Azir. And obviously the Kindred, you know, is not going to be able to get that, uh, that mark just yet. But that's another good invade. So right, assessing... This next phase is very, very important. Kindred died, fortunately. If Kindred didn't die and Kindred was healthy enough, what do you think they would be going to do? They would be going to steal their mug. That's right, I had to sneeze. Change the seasons, everybody. <laughs> okay, so the Kindred would have taken this, which means would you even go to this in the first place? No, right? You just go straight to the bottom side. Wolves, Grom, Gank bot lane, knowing that they were here having to reset, so you can kind of go to the bot lane here and get a bit of tempo prior. Very, very important. However, because the Kindred does die, first things first, first order of business, Regain control of your jungle. That's the most important thing here. Regain control of your jungle. Raptors, wolves, grump, prevent the counter jungling that could happen should sadness happen again. And Kindred shows up here chasing the Yone with the Azir. This is looking kind of doomed and scuffed because of that level one, level two invade, excuse me. Yes, we got the blue, but the rest of it is kind of falling apart. You see the Kindred here is trying to keep this pressure up. And a low elo, they're not going to keep the pressure up. They will end up falling back to farm and you'll regain control fine. The flash we burned earlier from the uh, Jin is something we can try and abuse now. So Caitlyn goes in here. We're going to try and hit it, which we do. The cleanse is used. Do we have enough damage for a kill? Let's have a look. No, we... Oh, dear me. That was not... That was not good. <laughs> that was not good. But noble attempt, right? 
It's the attempt that matters here. We don't want results based, based upon our ADC's unbasedness. I hope you followed that. Scuttlecrab here, obviously going to be taken by the Kindred, says, you know what? I'm going to leave them alone and I'm just going to repeat gank on the Yone. So already, because of our power thing, right? Yes, we've lost Krugs. Yes, we got invaded again. We still managed to get off two ganks in the bot lane. We still managed to regain control of our jungle. And now, because of this, the Kindred is redirected to this red. Perfect. Equal and opposite. You take my red, I take your red. Obviously, in this particular situation, watch the Azir, watch the enemy bot lane, keep it in the bush. You're never sure if they're going to rotate to this particular scenario and um, hurt you. Mm. And obviously scan and clear the wards here. So we see this, we're going, oh, thank goodness, because that means um, the Kindred isn't just trailing me around. And guess what? If they are trailing you around, following you around in this particular situation, right, you can kill them. And again, forcing an invading jungler into a little bit of a corner is exactly what you want to do. Prevent that lead that they got initially from escalating by just not letting them kill you. Now, if you can die zero to one, basically, with this amount of invades, I think that's pretty good, you know? Now, because the Kindred makes a crucial mistake, and guess what? An invading jungler in 99% of your games will always make a critical error. They will always overreach. Whether your laner does something about it, whether you do something about it, doesn't matter. As long as we capitalize on said mistake. Now, this is good, right? We're back in the game. We're level six, all right? And now here we go ahead and have a look. Oh, I went too fast. Kindred says, ah, I know Talia's there. I'm going to keep invading because now you're kind of invested in this whole concept of I need to be, I, I need to be invading. Like, I'm not going to be able to outfarm and outscale a Talia just by existing in my jungle. I need to keep this pressure up. Now, because you're Talia, we do have this benefit, but this doesn't really matter. The, the principle uh, is the important aspect here. Just rotate. Just rotate. If you're a regular jungler, I do this on Mundo. I do this on Orn all the time. I'll just walk on over, cut through here, and make a cutoff point. So you might lose the blue, but you should be able to still get the kills. And Yone has decided, you know what, I'm done with this bot lane. I'm going to go, so I'm done with this mid lane. I'm going to go bot lane here as well. But nothing happens. Well, that was anticlimactic, wasn't it? Now we can fall back into our jungle. We're 2-2-1. Two, two, We're up 7 CS. The kills don't really matter. And now we can breathe a little bit. So you need to create this space by one. Don't go where they are unless, of course, you're looking to kind of... Um, force them to another side of the map and then make an equal and opposite play, which is what we did. And then of course, when they force into this box, equal and opposite. If they take your red side, you take their red side. If they take your blue side, you take their blue side. You can continue this concept of equal and opposite pretty frequently. And then naturally collapse when you do actually have prior and advantages. And then of course we fast forward out of base. We see the Kindred going to the Herald there on vision. Again, we go to the bot lane. So make sure you pick that lane that you feel like, okay, look, I can gank this. I can spend some time here and the Kindred's not going to be here because the Kindred's too busy worrying about me. And dealing with these invades is quite tough. You know what I mean? It, it requires a lot of mental fortitude. You're going to have a bit of a negative KD early, but as long as you follow these steps, you should have no issue kind of getting back into the game. And obviously if we skip forward a little bit here, do we actually get something here? I think we should try. It's a lot of investment in the bottom lane, but it's a tough lane to gank in Junkama. Not something I would necessarily recommend, but at least we can get some counter jungling done, knowing that the Kindred's probably going to try and do something here and here, right? I mean, this is pretty pretty self-explanatory. So here we go on the bottom lane. Just keep investing. There's no there's no worry for us. You know, there's no jungle collapse. I know Kindred's top side because I'm tracking. And I'll link below my tracking video. I made an ultimate tracking guide this year so that you guys can make these plays when you're being invaded, when you're behind, because the tracking and the vision are crucial. So let's look at a quick nugget of wisdom that can help you in that regard. But obviously this game, um, it's all equalized now. The invades don't matter. We're straight at 1v1 jungling. Normal jungling principles apply. And the invading torment is over. Because here it's not so much, you know, the invades that are kind of the, the issue, but because it's Nidalee, there's going to be a lot of pressure. And whether that pressure is going to be invades on you and your buffs or level twos in your bottom lane, the biggest tip for me to give to all of you in these particular situations, the Kindred game, last example, or this one here, don't let these hyper-aggressive carnivorous style junglers affect what your game plan is. Leeson's game plan obviously is going to be a little bit similar, but if you were an AFK farming jungler, just get your sequencing down. Warding level one, level two, perfect. Right, that's all you're looking to do. Just go ahead and ward, just like I told you the Talia should have. Avoid those invades, do counter jungling when you can, and when you have to give things up, give things up. But the worst thing you can do is try and force yourself to play their game plan. Because then you're playing into the wheelhouse. Because they can do this, you cannot. Now the Lee Sin on this side, right, has gone red, blue, grum. This is a specifically weird clear uh, in the modern meta. Uh, because obviously we're going to look for uh, 
We're going to look for some sort of Red Raptors Grump into the fallback, which I still think is better. But now, is the Nidley still cheesing? You know, the Nidley could have very easily just kept on sequencing, and now she's forced at least into this bit of no man's land of like, is she here? Is she not here? Do I, do I, do, do I shadow? Uh, do I go mid? Like, he doesn't know what to do, and the Nidley knows that she's going to be thinking about this, so she's going to move on back here, ward, and try and trap for a scuttle fight. Now, the Leeson's going to hit this, all right, not see her, see her here. What do you think you would do in this particular situation? Look at the, looking at the lane states. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if you were being invaded and we were to apply the principles of the previous example, we'd say, hey, look, don't be where they are. Don't be where there's no prior. Now, in this situation, that would mean without logical cliff, we did Red Raptors grump into this. We could fall back blue, wolves, loot back around, take the scuttle, right? That's what we'd want to do. Then we gank on the top lane, which is, you know, it's Camille, but... You can probably definitely do something, especially seeing as she has no flash. She already has a kill. She has no flash, whether that happened level one or in lane. Pay attention to those things using your F keys. That's fine. You know, we can give it up. The same principles apply to when you're fighting in the river here. And watch. We're going to go for this now. We're forcing a Maokai to rotate. All right. The Akshan should rotate first, but the Tilly says, you know what? I've watched a lot of videos. I'm going to rotate here too. Do you still take this fight in this particular moment? No. Turn on the arc shot or just run away and go take the top skull gang top lane. Fall back to this side or you can invade here, right? That's the kind of stuff you're looking to do. You can really lose a lot of games when you're being invaded just by not paying attention to what you can give up and to, to live to fight another day. So here we go. Leeson hits a Q. He will do the goodness. Go in. There we go. Thresh will die, but Akshan will get a kill. And then Akshan will get another kill. And uh, now you have a 3 one zero auction because we force this. Now, here we go. How is Nidley? Let's just swap it over. Ooh, nice spear. Okay, let's just speed up. Here we go. Off we go. Double scuttle control. Red side quadrant completed. Shadowing through mid lane. Doesn't really matter. Chuck a spear. There we go. Leave a ward on the Raptors because we know Lee Sin will come back to this top side. Take this scuttle. Now, in these particular situations, all gang top lane, obviously. Obviously. F keys, top lane, stonks. Very nice. Now we can push this out here and fall back down to this, all right? Lee Sin obviously overstays here and dies anyway, so it's not really of, that's not our concern whatsoever. What happens if you're the Nidley? Now I want you to use a bit of your imagination. You're the Nidley, you're any sort of jungler in the game, doesn't really matter. And now the enemy mid has prior, the enemy top has prior, the enemy jungler, they're gonna wanna invade you on your blue. How do you avoid this? Wards. That's why swapping over to Scanner is great if you wanna gank, but it also has so much value to keep the stealth ward uh, in these early phases. Because what's, what's, what's going to happen here? The, the, the Lisa knows that he's made boo-boos, that he's made sad decisions. So he's already going to go for this blue invade, knowing that the Nidalee should be falling back to that, but has to leave. He has to leave. Obviously. Hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah, okay. So he tries to make this play, gets caught up with a side wish again. Vision video that I released last week hugely explains a lot about this. And all of a sudden now he's reduced into his jungle now again. Is Nidley, look at him, look at him. Is Nidley going into my jungle now to steal my crocs? Now, I think logically, uh, no, because obviously she hasn't spent yet. He has, it's better for her to fall back to the blue side quadrant. She could also full sequence down. But if you had any inclination that the Kindred, that the Nidley, that, in, that the invading jungler had moved into the zone, what would you do? Do you really go back into this? No, that's where you lose in low elo. You, you just actively go for your crug. Why would you even go for your crug? Yeah, I know you want to shadow this, but the, the Nidley's going to have to reset. What's a better play if we want to avoid the Nidley? We want to avoid the stronger jungler. It doesn't matter who we are. Boom, boom, down here. Or, of course, if you kind of know she's going top lane through whatever vision or the fact that she's reset, always counter jungle this, gank this, and fall back to this, right? So look for those equal and opposite plays. Look to avoid them when you know where they're going and use your vision to avoid being invaded. Whether it's a control ward at the entrance of your jungle, a ward on your buff really early on, a lot of this can be avoided just through vision control, but also a little bit of logic. What does happen? She's probably going to just do this and reset. There you go. And now he thinks, ah, she's going top lane. But I don't think he tracked the, the reset. See, look at this. He didn't track the reset. This is a complete oversight on his, on his part. I mean, he looked at the lane and the wave state, but look at the wave here. Is Nidalee really going to gank it on with the potential of at least him being top lane with a Warhammer and she hasn't reset? No. He could have used it to get Temper Prior bot lane, get some counter jungling, to go mid lane for the shutdown. A lot of different plays he could have looked at doing. So if you want to avoid invades and you want to thrive when you have been invaded and killed and you're having a bit of a sad time in lane prior, hopefully these tips will help you out. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Subscribe potentially as we don't get a lot of those anymore, but they do tend to help. 
The other two videos on your screen now should help enhance your jungling even further.